Welcome back to the Struggle Communication Group Studios. For you another bull with Andy Carlson, Minnesota's 87th best weekly podcast, the show about everything and nothing. Absolutely zero zilch nada. Uh, coming right at your ass one day a week. Happy Friday out there, one and all. Sid Shotgun is Uncle Nick. Follow me on Twitter and Nick's son. Hey, how's it going? Yo, what's up? Are you actually an uncle? Yes, I am. Yep, oh. I have uh, two uh, nieces and a nephew. We need to go over the entomology of the Uncle Nick moniker at some point. So, uh, when uh, the statute of limitations has <laughs> expired. Because, uh, not to get into the gory details, but uh, in college, there was rumors of Nick, Nick having a farm. Oh, that. Yeah. Oh, that. Um, Oy vey. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, man. Tell friends, spread the word, iTunes, Stitcher, ah, oh, radio, good times. Uh, today, coming on in, um, so with the Winter Olympics on, it's the once every four years that we revisit one of the greatest documentaries ever made, Cool Runnings, so we'll talk about that. Uh, also, producer Allie, uh, working her, her little booty off, she's got a, wait, hold on, I cannot say that. I'm, I'm not allowed to say it, because uh, was it Mor- Morgan Spurlock, who... Like, got out ahead of sexual harassment claims because he called his assistant, like, hot pants or something like that. Or oh, sex I f- pants. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. So, of course, I could edit that out, but that's not our ethos here on any of the shows because that would require work. But uh, producer Allie's been working uh, her butt off. Uh, we got uh, How Old They Be, Olympics Movie Edition. That's going to be a good time. And then we got the news. And, um, yeah, other than that, uh, Nick, how's your week? It's been pretty good. Uh, steady, steady working, working the job, and uh, I don't know I have not made it out to see uh, Black Panther. I think mm-hmm. we talked about last week that I would try to make it out. Have not seen it yet, but I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty sure I'll see it uh, next week. Well, it is like destroying box office records, and uh, everyone uh, who's seen it that I've talked to says that it's phenomenal. It's like one of the the best uh, Marvel movies that they've done. Yeah, it's great. I, you kind of assume, I mean, the bar is set pretty high because if you're a Marvel fan, you know, all these movies are tying into each other. It's leading to these future upcoming movies, uh, the big ones, the Affinity Wars, the summer. So, you know, it's great. I'm I'm happy. Uh, you know, I'm, a lot of people like it. And, yeah, I hope it. Um, it's it's possible it can already spark uh, some sequels uh, beyond it. So, good. Ooh, Black Panthers. Yeah, you know, like Alien went to Aliens. <laughs> yeah. Possibly. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's see. Oh, um, Josh Peltzer, Remax Preferred, is the guy that you want to see because he is the he's the Ant-Man of uh, the, the Twin Cities real estate market where uh, he's amazing. He's phenomenal. You did not expect that. Actually, maybe that's not a compliment. Josh Peltzer, you, you know what to do. Uh, buying or selling your home. Spring is coming up. Summer is coming up. That's when uh, the big time uh, buying and selling goes down. Uh, make sure that you are prepared. Uh, get with Josh today. He'll walk you through all of your options, whether you're buying or selling. Uh, 763-213-4617. JoshPeltzer.com. Josh Peltzer, Remax Preferred. All right. So we, we watched uh, Cool Runnings uh, over the weekend, and you forget how – like well done the movie is like the the dialogue is phenomenal the the action uh, or like the pace of the movie uh it goes along really smoothly and john candy i feel like john candy does not get his due uh because we we talk about like all these older actors that we really enjoy like the like the bill murray's like the chevy chases like the dan Aykroyds. but i mean john candy sort of gets glossed over yeah yeah i think i completely agree he's been in a uh... A number of great films uh, in the the key eighties, um, early nineties, kind of the highlight of of when that comedy and stuff um, w- was most needed, yeah. and it, it's great. Um, obviously, gone way too soon, and you know, uh, could you imagine if he was still alive now, the type of movies he could have still been in? Two thousand tens, maybe not so much. Uh, kind of maybe a waning career, but uh, definitely throughout the nineties, I think he could have been. He could have been something, uh, something really great. Was it Uncle Buck? Uncle Buck, uh, my fa- one of my favorite space balls. Oh uh, yeah, planes, trains, and al- automobiles is a fantastic uh, film. Definitely a lot of quotables in there. Oh and yeah, and he had, he had the actor thing where like a movie comes out like a year after their death. It, it was um, Wagons East for him. Uh, for John Candy, because I remember it was uh, Heroes, almost Heroes. 
uh, with Matthew Perry uh, for Chris Farley. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but uh, let's just taste some of I'm here to offer you an opportunity of a lifetime. Ah. We're looking for a sponsor for the first Jamaican bobsled. Yeah, whatever happened to Leon? <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, let's get some food. John Candy looks like he was built for cold weather. Yeah. Slow down! Slow it down! Slow it down! Slow it down! Oh my god! Oh, Audrey! I hate you! I hate you! I hate you! And then they got in the fight. I want to see the slow clap. Reality, I don't think that you make it with any chance of winning a battle. Yeah, oh, just let it be. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Uh, so Leon, he was in. Uh, he's still working. Uh, he's in the Temptations as David Ruffin. Uh, cool Runnings. Uh, he was in uh, the Tupac basketball movie. I forget what that was called. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, well, who's more well known, Leon or Dougie Doug? I want to say Dougie Doug. I feel like his name uh, did a lot more back in the '90s than uh, Leon did. Um, yeah. you know, uh, Dougie Doug has done Shark Tales. Mm. Uh, you know, so voice acting. Um, uh, from Wikipedia here, I guess um, he was in a movie called An Act of War back in 2015. So, oh, he was on the Cosby's. Oh yeah, I guess uh, Griffin. <laughs> yeah, I guess that makes a lot of sense. Who, who knew that Malik Yoba would be besides um, uh, John Candy, like the most well-known actor, come out of the movie? <laughs> Do you remember that? Uh, was it, uh, NYPD? No, uh, New York Undercover. Yeah, that was a good cop show. Oh, yeah, I remember that. He's also in Copland. <laughs> yeah. Which is also a movie. So so they're all working. I mean, they're all doing yeah. something. Um, You know, um, ha- they haven't had their, you know, life cut short uh, like Johnny Candy did. So that's good. Oh, he was on Empire. You ever watch Empire? I never did, no. Uh, I watched, like, the first two seasons, and it got a little weird for me. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Who? Oh, he's the uncle. Uh, spoiler, he's the uncle that, like, uh, the wife of the oldest son kills. Oh. Hmm. Malik Yoba. There you go. Do you still look, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of looking at pictures on Wikipedia. Do they all, they all like, Leon has a picture on Wikipedia. They, they, look, they look the same. They, yeah. they look, you can kind of, yeah. Yeah, Leon kind of aged. But not badly aged. Yeah. Um, um, I have read on the Wikipedia page for Cool Runnings. I mean, for you guys who love the movie, that it is highly fictionalized. Obviously, oh, yeah. there's, there's a lot of storylines that you think might go along with the real life uh, Jamaican bobsled team. A lot of things were fake. A lot of things were made up. A lot of well, uh, we watched the uh, it was like a Vice you know, video about like the real bobsledders because it was two brothers. One of them. Uh, just went as a spectator. <laughs> Except, like they're all sprinters and athletes and stuff. But one guy got hurt, and then uh, the brothers like, "All right, I'm in." <laughs> so that's what, like that's a, a that's a great story too. Like, don't get me wrong, I like the fictionalized story, but just uh, a, a true telling of it would be that would be fine too. But it, it does seem like the the crash, uh, you know, the bad first run, the the really good second run, and then the crash was uh, accurate. Yes. And then, uh, except they they didn't carry their their sled like as we're watching yep. now, they just walked across the finish line. <laughs> Apparently, a lot of Jamaica's tourism, uh, like merchandise, is still like very bobsled related. Are you sick? <laughs> Which is yeah. kind of, oh yeah, there we go. The slow, slow clap. clap. Yes. Yeah, and I think there's only really been a couple 
Um, slow claps? No, yeah, there's only been a couple slow claps. There's only been a couple Jamaican bobsled teams since, though. I don't think they've been there every year. Uh, well, um, they were there. there for, like, uh, four straight Olympics, and then, uh, like, the four-man teams, but then okay. those wane, and then uh, they've been really getting into two-man, apparently. Okay. I just thought those suits were awesome, though. I'm surprised that none of them actually would, like, <laughs> the dad finally yeah. accepts you. Um, like, and we talked about it, I think, last week. I'm surprised more people aren't hurt from this thing. Like, you see an accident, like, obviously this is fictionalized, but you see an accident like that, and I'm like, dude, I'm surprised your head isn't, like, blown the fuck off. Yeah. Like, just, uh, like, the speeds they're going. And, yeah, your head is just the only thing sticking out there. If you hit that wall, man, you're, you're gone. Right, enough of that. Uh, a name that's popped up again is Eddie the Eagle, where he was the guy who found a loophole uh, in the 88 Olympics and got onto, I think it was like the British or maybe even Scottish like national team, and he was ski jumping. There was a movie about him. Uh, Just recently. Yeah. Uh, I haven't watched it yet. Maybe I should have, but um, now we're going to watch like the real jump because apparently he was like really, really bad, like horrible. Eddie. The Eagle Edwards oh, from Storbritannien, an anti-hjälte som slog alla olympiska rekord i just den. Ah, it's in Italian. All right, so he, he, he looks like Bubbles from Trailer Park Boys. <laughs> he does. I don't know what that is. Yeah. And then he's leading in. He's bad. He's still bad. Whoa. It seemed like that was that bad. Yeah, he didn't go like... far. Yeah, and you know... Yeah, that may be the worst jump, um, yeah. you know, Olympic-wise, but that's better than 98% of the world could probably do. I know if you put yeah. me on some some skis and you make me fly down there, I'm going to die. Oh, it is Hugh Jackman. Yeah. I, I, th- I thought he it was Gerard play, Butler. He doesn't play the Eagle, does he? No, no. Uh, oh, uh, Taron Edgerton, the uh, um, guy from Kingsman. Oh. Yeah. For you when I was a kid, all the doctors said I should give up sports. Where do you think you're going, young man? The Olympics. You better take this. Put your medals in. Thanks, Mum. For as long as I can remember, it has been my ambition to become an Olympian. Yeah. Eddie, you are not an athlete! I just needed to find the right sport. <laughs> Britain hasn't had a ski jumper since 1929. I'm going to be a ski jumper. He's going to break his neck. <laughs> I'm going to break his neck. Time to start jumping is when you're five or six. I heard you were a champion, so I was thinking maybe you could give me a few tips. Give up? There's one for free. Watch this guy, number two in the world. <laughs> and he knew what he was doing. <laughs> it's not actually going to jump, is it? You're not going to give up, are you? You want your moment, Eddie? You got to do this oh, for that's... real. Our strategy will best be described. I feel like Hollow Notes. Uh... What's that song? Um, you Make My Dreams. I feel like that song is on trailers quite frequently. It's a great song. It's very that, trailerish. That... <laughs> very trailerish. Yeah. I'll take it as a compliment. Is ugly but effective. Coming in May. The Olympics is associated with certain qualities, excellence, achievement. They have no desire to well, associate. I feel like music in, in movies and, and trailers, too, like uh, it manipulates you into having a feeling and that one's you know it's poppy upbeat it makes you feel good and so then you you come away from the trailer uh un- subconsciously associating that feel good feeling with that movie and then you actually go see it and yeah. like it's probably like 90 percent heartbreak because obviously this guy didn't have an easy life trying to be in the olympics yeah with defeat you're a disgrace to the sport good personal best and we're a disgrace Mr. Edwards, your jump doesn't count. Because you just changed the rules. Don't I have a right to represent my country? No. <laughs> well, uh, that's just like cool runnings. Like, we'll just change the rules. Yeah. My dreams turned into a nightmare. It's a world that doesn't want to know you. So what's new? The British Olympic Association is trying to stop me. I have to do this. The press all want to hear you. I wonder if that's story. true. I was kicked off every team I was ever on. 
before I even got a chance to prove myself. I take jumping very seriously, nearly as much as proving people wrong. And where do you think you're going? The Olympics. I thought you might need this. Ah! It's higher than you jump before, faster than you've gone before. You can break bones. You're lucky if you can walk again. As your coach, I think you're crazy. But as your friend, fly. <laughs> that was nice. I think uh, there's a lot of that kind of story going on in the Olympics mm. right now where um, um, obviously everyone's watching the best and the greatest, but there are those small stories from like lesser countries and um, athletes who you know are just lucky to be there, who work their butt off, going through loopholes, attending as many... Olympic, um, non-Olympic events like world events to yep. to get in there and have a chance, you know, and uh, you know that says a lot, and you know, power to them, and power to anyone who wants to strive for dreams. Let's play the game. Celebrities are old. That was hot. Sixty-nine, dudes. The question is, how old? Get off my lawn. Time for another rousing round of how old they be. I can't let you in because you're old as fuck. For this club, not, you know, for the earth. All right, you know the game. Uh, Producer Allie has listed off uh, a number. Uh, a number of uh, actors and actresses that have been in Olympic themed movies. Uh, we guess the age, whatever that, however many were off is our score. Our lowest score wins at the end. If you did get a dead nuts on, that's a five point deduction. Play along at home. Tweet in your scores. It's going to be a good time. Nick always sucks at this game. You know what? I've won a couple, and for the Olympics, that's good enough. Thank you. Uh, first up. Robbie Benson. Robbie Benson, who played Billy Mills in Running Brave, a 1983 film. It's good that she included the years, because some of these, I, I have no idea. So I actually, I have no idea who that is, yeah. either. All right, so, so, uh, hmm, so 83. And God, <laughs> the I mean, you, you'd assume that he would be the protagonist, and Olympians are usually in their 20s, sometimes 30s. Uh, so I will say, backing that out. Uh, I will say he is sixty-five. <laughs> I said fifty. Fifty. This, will this, be the... this could be a ball game. <laughs> uh, Robbie Benson is sixty-two. Oh, it's okay. Right, I'm gonna make it. It's not, it's not your. It's not, it's not your fault, Nick. I do like them apples. Uh, <laughs> number two out of thirteen. Two out of thirteen. Ben Cross. Ben Cross, who played uh, Harold Abrahams. In Chariots of Fire, 1981. Um, all right, so. I don't know what that is. What's Chariots of Fire? I, I think that's the one about the four minute mile. Oh. Yeah. Like, so. Uh, Do you think he ran the mile or? Uh, four minute mile had never been done until, like, this little wafy, uh, pasty British dude does it. Is that Harold Aim? Is that who. Um, you know anything about the movie? I was just wondering. No. I'm trying trying to guess. Is this like the grandpa or like yeah. maybe the son or something? I don't yeah. know. Or, or is it the guy? Uh, I will say Ben Cross is at 65 again. I said <laughs> I warmed up a little bit. I said 63. <laughs> 63. Ben Cross is 70. Oh there. wow, that's not bad. Uh, next up. Uh, Dougie Doug, ooh, of the aforementioned Cool Runnings, he played Sanka Kofi. I didn't know he had a last name. I thought it was just Sanka. Uh, oh, wait, no, that's funny because isn't Sanka like a brand of coffee? Like like crappy, like instant coffee or something? I think so. Yeah. All right, so Sanka, Dougie Doug, 19, uh, Cool Runnings 93. How old is Dougie Doug? I think I saw hey. Leon's age, so yeah. I will be honest and say I saw when doing this, this story beforehand. I saw one. Of the, I don't think I saw Dougie's. So. Um, all right. So he, he had to be like what twenty five when he did Cool Runnings. So uh, be, uh, 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 seventy. Uh, I'll say. Uh, I'll say he's fifty. I said forty eight. Dougie Doug forty eight. Dougie Doug forty eight. No. Yes. All right. So Nick has a a five point 
a deduction. And I'm still losing. Probably. <laughs> yeah. uh, next up, oh, uh, Taron Edgerton. Taron Edgerton played uh, Eddie Edwards in Eddie the Eagle. Uh, also in Kingsman. He's really good in Kingsman. Uh, let's see here. Hmm. Uh, except actors always run a little bit older than you would think. So, But I was going to guess like mid-20s, but that may be off. Um, I, I will say... You know, going with my by fives thing, I will say 25. I said 30. 30. Taron Edgerton is 28. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, you're actually closer. Ah, it's weird. Uh, all right. Number five out of 13 in Olympics. How old they are? How old they be Olympics movies? Uh, Colin Ferguson. Colin Ferguson, who played Tiff Wood in Rowing Through. I don't know what this is about. I, I, assume, I assume it's about crew. <laughs> it's probably I, not about Javelin. Uh, but Colin Ferguson, uh, uh, so, movie came out in 96. Um, mm-hmm. okay. All right, I will say Colin Ferguson is 50. I said 51. 51. Colin Ferguson is 45. Uh, ah, damn it. Hmm. Drat. Oh, well. Uh, next up, uh, John Hedder, who played uh, Jimmy McElroy in Blades of Glory. I do not remember a thing about this movie. Other than uh, Will Ferrell's in it. Oh, yeah. I don't think I've actually really seen it. I, I've seen clips and stuff. It's one of those yep. silly, I think, like, stepbrother type of movies where it's all about the two obnoxiously crazy uh, people. I think John Hedder, well-known for... I think he was Napoleon, right? Dynamite? Yeah. Uh, Napoleon Dynamite, uh, School for Scoundrels with Billy Bob Thornton, uh, which was a, a good movie. Um, all right, so John Hedder... Also, Nick Foles lookalike. Uh, I will say John Hedder is 40. I said 41. 41. John Hedder is 40. Bam. Ah, Nailed damn. it. Ding dong. The witch is dead. Now, it would actually be cheating of producer reality to get actors and actresses who are uh, ages by five. You know, like 40, 45, mm-hmm. 50. Because that's all I guess anymore. There we go. Uh, next up is Muriel Hemingway. Muriel Hemingway, who played uh, Chris Cahill in Personal Best 1982. Muriel Hemingway's a, a woman, right? I believe so. Okay. Um, let's back it out the basic math. Uh, I will say Muriel Hemingway is 60. I did 65. 65. Oh, this could be it. Muriel Hemingway is 56. Oh... So sorry, Muriel. It's okay. You, you uh, just I, I, overestimated a woman's age by nine years, by a decade. Most women like that, though, I think. No, not for the they don't. Uh, number eight. <laughs> number eight out of 13. Uh, Stephen James. Stephen James, who played Jesse Owens in Race. In Race. Also, I think Jason Sudeikis is in this movie. I think he plays the coach. Oh, really? At the Ohio State University. All right, so Jesse Owens. Uh, no, no, doing that. I love the Jesse Owens story, like because um, that that Olympic Games was in Berlin, and you had Hitler, and you know Hitler with his whole He's Aryan a big fan race of thing. Hitler, if you can't tell, yeah, his, his whole Aryan race thing, and then Jesse Owens, uh, yeah, this African American dude, just comes in, whack, just destroys, and then Hitler has to take his stupid mustache and be embarrassed. Uh, or right, so Stephen James. <laughs> Uh, I don't know anything about him, but I will say he is 25. I said 23. 23. Oh, 32, 23. Stephen James is 24. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. Right in the middle. Uh, We got five names left. Uh, Nick and I both have a five-point deduction. Uh, Keep along. Tally uh, your scores at home on how old they be Olympics edition. Next up is Moira Kelly. Moira Kelly, who played uh, Kate Mosley in The Cutting Edge, 1992. Great movie. I, I think I made some Twitter comments about it um, over the years. Um, I saw it in college. Fell in love with it. Good. What was the movie about? Uh, it, well, it's, a, it's not a based on true story at all. It's about a former hockey player and a, um, um, a, a difficult-to-work-with figure skater mm. um, like oh. set up together so they could be yep. uh, figure skating pairs. Yep. And obviously, you know... They both rough edges, but then realize they really like each other, and you know, one of those things, one of those 
Q ones. I cry yeah. a little bit. Toe pick. All right. I will say right. Moira Kelly is uh, 45. I said 50. 50. Ooh. Moira Kelly is 49. Ooh. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, four to go. Jared Leto. Jared Leto, the lead singer of 30 Seconds to Mars, also played Steve Prefontaine in Boogie Nights. No, Prefontaine, 1997. Uh, I don't know. I don't know this one. I what's about. Uh, Prefontaine was uh, like a distance runner in Oregon. He's like one of the first Nike guys, I think. Actually, I think he might have been the first guy to wear Nikes as a running shoe. Um, all right. So Jared Leto. Okay. <sighs> I'll say 45. <laughs> I said 38. 38. This could be it. What? Jared Leto's 28, and then I just cry. Jared Leto is... 46. 46. Damn oh, it. Oh, wow. <laughs> it Dang. looked like a five. It looked like a five. It did look like a five, from, look like a five from mine. Um, Damn it. Darn it. Way off. Yeah. Uh, all right. Three to go. Uh, Tatum O'Neill. Tatum O'Neill, who played Sarah Brown in International Velvet, 1978 remake. I do not know who this is. Um, she was, I think she was one of the youngest um, um, Academy Award winners uh, from, or like nominees ever. I think at 12, I, I think she was something for a movie called Paper Moon back in the day. I, is, is she the one who dated uh, like uh, I think uh, Michael Jackson, I think, I think they were kind of an item for a little while. Can anyone really be an item of Michael Jackson? Maybe. She's got a light skin friend who looked like Michael Jackson. Got a dark skin friend who looked like Michael Jackson. Wow. Kanye. Uh, Tatum O'Neill. All right, so 78. Man, that was a while ago. Um, so back then out. So 1950. No, that would be it. Uh, 60, uh, 50. Uh, I will say she is 60. I said 58. 60, 58. Tatum O'Neill. Survey says 54. Oh, my bad, Tatum. What can you do? Uh, two, two to go. Two to go. Kurt Russell, who played Herb Brooks. Rest in peace, Herb Brooks, the pride of Minnesota, uh, in Miracle 2004. I've never seen Miracle. I never had either. I know that it's a crime in to Minnesota, live in the state of Minnesota yeah. to have not seen Miracle. Uh, Kurt Russell. Man. Also, Ego in <laughs> Guardians 2. Uh I'm still undecided, like how much I like that movie. Like it was good, but I don't think I liked it like it because I felt like the, it just dragged on too long when they're on the planet. Uh, I, we talked about this a while ago. Uh, when I first saw it, I didn't know what to think. I watched it a couple more times, and I actually prefer it now more than the first one. That's I think okay. there's, it's there's just other stuff about it. I will say Kurt Russell is sixty-five. It's a sixty-four. Sixty-four. Kurt Russell is. 66. Damn it. Oh, wow. <laughs> this game is so dumb. Some of them is just yeah. really close or just way off. Uh, last but not least, Channing Tatum. Uh, Channing Tatum, who played Mark Schultz in uh, Foxcatcher, which is a really good movie. Like, Steve Carell is, like, creepy good in it. I think he should have some more serious roles. Uh, we, we know how funny he is, but uh, you know, he's got some acting chops as well. So, Channing Tatum. I feel like Channing Tatum is going to be sneaky old. Like, uh, as soon as we find his real age, I'll be like, wow, that's kind of old. Um, I feel like we might have had him once before, but I, could, I couldn't remember if it was for me. Yeah, producer Ali's pretty sharp on this. Uh, I will say Channing Tatum is 40. Oh, man. I said 28. 28. I think this he's... Could be it. Channing Tatum is 37. Wow. He's, he's older than us? I would not have thought that. All right. Let's see what the damage. So we both had five... Five point deductions. Survey says a uh, uh, final score of thirty three, and Nick has fifty seven. I have proven victorious yet again. <sighs> uh, uh, that was the crowd. Yeah, yeah. It's all good. Uh, Nick, get the news ready, and then I'll tell you about the Strother Communications Group, because they are the best. 2018 is the year for you and your business and your brand. you got to build it up, though. Digital marketing is the wave of the future, and that's where everyone is. That's where all everyone's attention is. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, Musical.ly, yeah, things that you haven't even heard of. 
and let the pros help you out there because uh, you can't do it yourself. Nah. Also, building great websites, uh, working with uh, public relations as well, help you uh, build branding that resonates with your customers and your future customers, which are also important to find out more go to scgpr.com the struther communications group all right nick let's do a little news you are fake news sir go ahead can you george bush doesn't care about black people i ain't got time to believe you can't handle the truth the news with uncle nick all right nick what's going on in the world today all right i'm starting with some music news here uh gibson brands uh guitarist so a very popular guitar brand is kind of going uh i won't say out of business but uh and might be close to entering bankruptcy so kind of a shocker for a very popular guitar uh brand but um a lot of it has to do with um falling sales in guitar over the last uh number of years and a lot of economic stuff i don't understand with so while i read this maybe you can exp- expand more on this uh the Post reports that the company has received a- annual revenues of more than a billion dollars, <laughs> but is less than uh, six months away from $375 million of senior secured notes reaching maturity. Another $145 million in bank loans. Loans will be due Im- immediately if these those notes are not refinanced by July 23rd. Uh, I don't know what notes and stuff is. And uh, so essentially secured. they... Over leverage, they they borrow too much, and even though they have uh, you know a billion dollars worth of revenue, like it's not going to be able to satisfy uh, all, all of those debts, and, and some of those balloon payments are going to be coming in. So, uh, I mean, bankruptcy for businesses can mean a lot of things. It can be the reshuffling of the deck chairs, the Titanic, or it could be that they're actually getting things uh, restructured and they can come out of it. I mean, there's been uh, lots of companies that have come out of Chapter Seven or Chapter Eleven bankruptcy. Uh, and you know, been stronger because of it, and I don't know, we'll, we'll see. Like, even if uh, Gibson goes under, like someone will buy that brand because of how valuable it is, because it's iconic. I mean, it's Gibson guitars. Yeah, it's one of the. I mean, that and like Fender, are some of the biggest uh, guitar brands ever. And I think uh, what's keeping. Um, and I was doing other research on this because obviously I'm a musician fan. I love music, uh, and I play guitar, so. Ironically, I never owned a Gibson. Uh, Gibson guitars have always been kind of higher end, and yeah, you know, a lot of the big musicians who um, who own stuff like that, uh, the Les Paul guitars, are fantastic, beautiful guitars uh, um, from like Chuck Berry, Eric Clapton. Uh, all have had Gibson guitars. They never really had like a cheaper um, um, variety of guitars, and stuff like Fender, um, which I've had Fender guitars, I've had. Mm-hmm. You know, like, um, you know, um, I'm just thinking right now, if I had an Oscar Schmidt, uh, you know, there's a lot of inexpensive guitar brands that a number of people can afford and buy uh, and, and can get and purchase. Uh, Gibson wasn't uh, into that until, I think, in recent years. So um, so kind of new in the making money for, you know, affordable people industry right now. And I think, you know, that kind of hurts the industry a little bit as well. Yeah, so... Yeah, I, I think it'll. I think it'll bounce back. I think, um, I think they are reshuffling their. Uh, I think. I think they just did. Um, the, um, <laughs> yeah, the the company's chief financial officer just left after just six months in the role. I mean, there's a lot of. Um, there must be a lot of C, you know CEO stuff. A lot of things that are going to be changed and whatnot. And um, you have a brand. You have an icon that's that skips, and I can't imagine it disappearing forever. And Hell, I mean, Fender could probably even come and take it up. But, yeah, I don't know. It's just one of those shocking things. You don't expect to hear something like that. But, yeah, the the economy, you know, has kind of picked up. And it's doing well in a lot of areas. And I think the uh, music industry, with a variety of brands and stuff, kind of, you know, kind of gets overlooked. And, yeah, Gibson uh, was hurting a little bit. All right. What's next? All right. Uh, all right. This is from uh, Facebook, a Maxim article remember maxim i uh, used to love that website and and i still do Wait, maxim maxim that's still a thing that's still a thing people still look at it but um and i wanted to hear your take on this uh they, they posted back in january so sorry it's a little old but so it just made facebook recently was um the 20 best ranked dave Chappelle sketches yeah and uh, obviously you know 
brought up by the um, people at Maxim, so I'm sure everyone has uh, has their own opinion. Uh, which one? Um, I'm assuming if you're listening to the show, you know what Dave Chappelle and the Chappelle show was back in the yep. 2000s, right? Uh, give me the top five. All right, scrolling down. Sorry about that. They make giant. Uh, all right, number six, uh, real world. Oh, yeah, the mad real world. Mad. Mad real. I I all right. <laughs> all right, number five, Clayton Bigsby. Um, oh, Dave yeah. Chappelle as a uh, KKK man who doesn't realize that he is he's black. <laughs> number yeah, he's blind. Yeah. Yeah, that was a great one. <laughs> number four was um, electric guitar, drums, and electric piano. Um, this is the one where John Mayer and Questlove kind of come mm. in as Dave Chappelle kind of being himself, yeah. um, entering a... I believe he was in like a, a hair, well, like a yeah, barber shop, barber shop. <laughs> and they try to see what the effects of music is on them on the barber shop, and that was great. Uh, number three is the I know black people sketch part one. I think it was a game show where uh, Dave Chappelle asked people um, about black people. I think, yeah, I think I remember that one. Oh yeah, because I, th- I, I think uh, one of his writers, Neil Brennan, is uh, is in that sketch too. Okay. Yeah, because that's one of the contestants. <laughs> Uh, number two, uh, Tyrone Bigum's crack intervention. Um, <laughs> obviously, one of his most regular characters that he's ever played. Uh, uh, oh, he's the, the the white blue <laughs> blue lips and stuff wearing the red red uh, cap. Peanut butter and crack sandwich. <laughs> and number one. Wait, uh, wait, wait. Hold on. So, Rick James doesn't make the top five. Prince doesn't make the top five. What is happening? You didn't say. I you didn't hear what my number one was. Yeah, I know, but there's only two of them left. Okay. All right, so wh- what's number one? Number one is the True Hollywood Story of Prince. Hey, there, wait, so where's Rick James? Rick James was number uh, seven. Be six. Seven. Oh, yeah. yeah, six was the, the Mad Real World one. Yeah. Uh, number um, Just to do the finish off the top time quick, eight, Ask a Black Dude, where they interview <laughs> Paul Mooney. Mo- <laughs> Paul Mooney. Number nine, one of my favorites was the racial draft. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The Asian delegation takes the RZA, the JZA, the Wu Tang Clan. <laughs> Black delegation select them and them. Uh, Roots uh, number ten was uh, Roots outtakes. So yeah, oh, there you uh, go. so yeah, if, uh, if you're a big fan, uh, I think you can watch a lot of the Chappelle Show because um, this website on um, Maxim is all. I think there's either YouTube clips or from the Comedy Central itself. Uh, let's do one more. All right, and we'll talk about. Uh, Creed 2. Yeah. Uh, much no tell Andy, I haven't seen Creed 1 yet. But uh, there are signs that Creed 2 is at, is happening, going on. Uh, Shalone, uh, Shalone. Uh, Sylvester Shalone posted. Florian replaced my son sometime this week. Yeah. yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. Um, um, uh, Sly Stallone posted a Instagram. Yes, he's on Instagram. Of uh, some fan art of uh, Stallone. And they bring back Dolph Lundgren uh, as... Draco, and uh, it looks like the story is going to be Apollo Creed's kid versus uh, Draco's uh, kid. So very cool. We're getting some icons. Uh, I think number four is one of the most entertaining. The probably only mm-hmm. Rocky I've seen more Ball than can once. Change. The news can change. <laughs> we all can change. So uh, Ivan Drago. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, here's my here's my problem. Uh, the I feel like. Drago should have been brought up in the first Creed because it wasn't even talked about of you know, the man that killed his father. And I feel like like so the impetus of the second movie is going to be that Adonis Creed fights um, you know, Ivan Drago's kid as some sort of vengeance on him. But I mean, if Drago's kid was in the realm of being a well-known fighter, like I feel like it would have been brought up at some point in the first one. I mean, was it like? Did they bring up a lot of the dad uh, about Apollo? Yeah, yeah a little about bit. Apollo being, I mean, I mean, like I, not not like his death fight, but just like how he was as a person. I don't know. I mean, it's, it, this seems like the right way to go, though. I mean, this seems like the. I mean, I don't know what other would you do another get a freaking uh, Mister T in here yes. like a rando. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. I, I don't or mind. have him fight Brock Lesnar because it'd be funny. <laughs> I don't mind where this is going. Um, you know, when this one comes out, maybe I'll do a 
double Creed movie uh, marathon so I can uh, get all caught up with it. But yeah, as I says, um, you got you got it. You got what's the name back? You got the you got Ivan Drago. You got Dolph Lundgren who's working again, and that's always something. And that's news. The news with Uncle Nick. From the entire Channel Four news team, I'm Veronica Corningstone, and I'm Ron Burgundy. Go f- yourself, San Diego. Uh, something you shouldn't have yourself on is getting great night's sleep. Lisa Mattress is the way to go. Straight to your door, 100 nights guaranteed. It is the best mattress I've ever owned. Uh, Nick, is it the best mattress that you, you've ever owned? It's incredible. I can fall asleep like a baby on it. It's it's amazing. Wait, so yes or no? Yes. Oh. Yeah. Although, did you have like a water cell mattress? <sighs> that's not about, oh, my God. That's, that's part, back in the Uncle Nick days. I never yeah. got the appeal of water beds, but... Argument for another day. Uh, Lisa.com slash purple FTW is uh, the place to go. You get 100 bucks off any size mattress you want. Queen, King, California King, do whatevs you want. Hit it up. Uh, again, Lisa.com slash purple FTW, 100 bucks off any size mattress. All right, Nick, uh, what, what are you doing this weekend? Uh, might be working a little bit this weekend, but uh, also it's the startup of last week tonight is on second week, so I'm excited to uh, have my Sunday night's. Go to HBO. John Oliver. Yes. That's what I do. Yes, I'm aware. Uh, iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio is the place to go. Big thanks to producer Allie for not making us sound so stupid today. And if you enjoy the show, tell a friend, spread the word, add to the Jerome Homie Army. But for Nick, I'm Andy Carlson, saying Andy on Sanar. And bye bye. We'll talk to you next Friday. listening to Bull with Andy Carlson, Minnesota's 87th best daily podcast. Download the show on iTunes. Everyone's middle name is Jerome.